Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. We've got a Hellcat on the table, well parts of a Hellcat anyway, and the purpose of this video is to put this grip, this handle it grip, which is similar in design to the Talon grips, that is custom fit for the Hellcat. And you'll see this one's actually kind of cool, it's got cutouts with a green insert that goes behind them. So when I actually put this on the gun, these cutouts will be green, and they've got the Hellcat logo and then the, the handle it, which is their logo. So it's actually kind of a cool setup. These guns are comfortable guns, they're easy to shoot well in most cases, however they do have a very, very thin, small two-finger grip. That's the design, that's the, the plan for these. These types of grips, these are rubber ones, so they've kind of got a textured rubber, they're not sandpaper. We'll make the grip a little thicker and make it a little easier to hold on to these because that's one of the problems, especially for Hammer with his larger hands, is holding on to these. And I'm not going to need the slide, so I field stripped them. And I did that in advance so that I could try to minimize getting any kind of oil on it. I pre-cleaned these with alcohol. These kits do come with an alcohol swab. These are generally 70%. 91% alcohol works better. It's more effective at removing grease and oil. And you need these perfectly clean. Don't use gun solvent. Don't use your gun cleaning solvent because it does leave an oily residue. I actually use paper towels and 91% alcohol, which you can get at most pharmacies because these pads really, really aren't enough to get it fully clean. And then I let it dry. You want to let it dry all the way. So first off, let's see how much of a difference these are going to make. So I'm going to start, get it zeroed. The thickness of the grip is 10.3, well, I'm sorry, 1.03 inches side to side. And using the top, the well of the top finger groove, so 1.87, I'm going to use 7 because this all depends on which way I tilt it or let go of it because you know you got curvature there so it's a little hard to measure. So 1.87 and 1.095 and of course if I do this three times I'll get slightly different measurements down to the hundredths. And I'm going to try to minimize touching this. Also as I take the grips apart I'm going to want to dry fit them first. So I'm going to get rid of this slide and notice that these are just cutouts. You've got these little squares so when I peel the sticker off I'll need to stick the square on there. And I want to dry fit these to see how they're going to lay out because once I peel the backing off and actually start to work on it I'm not really going to have a lot of opportunity to fix anything. And this one goes from the front and then this little piece here goes on the back of the gun. I'm going to set this on the front and I'm just going to start to figure out where will this sit. And what I'm looking for is I don't want it to interfere with any controls. Notice how it's bubbled up at the front. That's a problem. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to want to snug it up a little bit. I don't want it to come down below the edge of the magazine well because I don't want it to interfere with installing a magazine. And I don't want it near any of the controls. So I got a lot of I don'ts in here. Now note, once I peel the backing off, this will actually be a little more compliant. The backing adds enough thickness to kind of mess up like some of the dry fit. But effectively what I'm doing is I'm getting an idea before I peel the sticky off, or the backing off and expose the sticky part, to get an idea how this thing's going to lay out. Like right now, the way I've got it, I would have a problem with it because it would interfere with the magazine release. So you're just going to kind of go through, dry fit it, figure it out, understand it, before you pull the sticky of the backing off. Most of these adhesives on these are good for one good one. You know, you just put it on and you're done. In some cases you can peel it off once, maybe twice at most, after which the adhesive will no longer stick. So if you're constantly putting it on, peeling it off, putting it on, peeling it off, trying to figure it out, it's not going to stick. Basically it's going to be game over. And the only other thing that I'm going to do is once I line these up on the back, I've got a piece here that's going to go on there. And I want to understand where that's going to lay before I go any further. So it's going to kind of lay like that. So now I've got an idea of how this thing is going to go together. Now I can start to actually do it for real. Set this frame down. I'm going to pick a side. I'm going to take a look at the instructions and see which they recommend. Do they recommend the left side or the right side? With talent grips, they recommend starting from the left. They don't have a left or right recommendation. They're actually starting from the front and then centering it. So at this point what I'm going to do, and this is going to be tough to show on camera, so I've shown you the basic process for determining how to lay it out. 
I'm going to do that for real. I'm going to peel the sticker off. I'm going to go very slowly. Now, what I'm going to have to do with these is I'm going to have to stick them on there in advance. If I try to line them up on the gun and line the thing up to them, that's just not going to work. So what I'm going to do is, as I peel off one of the sections, I'm going to drop that on there and pre-attach it to this so that it is just basically part of it. So starting with a section, using my fingernails and the actual grip itself, I'm going to peel a play piece off. I'm going to get it started. Now I'm going to try to avoid touching with my fingers on the actual adhesive of the grip. I use my fingernails whenever I need to have any contact with the grip itself and use my fingernails for it. So now I've got this taken care of. I'm going to pull it forward to me and I'm going to have to just put my face right down there and look. But basically what I want to do is make sure this square covers it completely. I don't want to leave any gaps. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is just get my face right up into it, which is going to be hard for you guys to see. But when I'm done, you'll see this square is perfectly covering that so that from the other side, when I actually install it, it'll show through green. So I'll do that and then I'll resume. So I lined it up and then I pushed it down. And now with it touching, without touching the, the adhesive of the grip, if I can, I'm going to pull the protection off of this. Now, pinning it down, I'm going to pull the rest off. Now, at some point, I'm going to have to pick this up. I'll grab it from the sides as much as possible. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Line it up, drop it in place, press it down, and peel its adhesive off. That time I touched it with my finger more than I should have. So now I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to actually bring it to the edge of the table so I can get it from underneath. And I'm going to start with fitting it to the front of the gun and start to wrap it around. In this corner, by the way, that picked up, that'll settle down when I lay it in. If I try to settle it down right now, I'm probably just going to end up with a big fingerprint on it. So I'm going to line this up, try to center it, and then just kind of lightly bring it around to see if I have this side lined up and I don't. So I just lightly tapped it. It of course started to grip right away because it is an adhesive but because I didn't seat it I can still actually move it around a little bit and all I'm going to do is basically do the same thing I did with the dry fitting except this time for real and I'm just lightly tapping because I want to make sure that I have the opportunity to move it if I need to before I actually start to put real pressure on it and make it permanent. And I'm going to verify that it's fitting in the grooves, that it's lining up, it's lining up the back. If I've got any bubbles, I try to try to mitigate those. I can tell from the grip that I have it too much to the left. I got too much on the left, so I'm just going to recenter it. And I'm going to go through this, and at this point to do this, I really need to bring it up to my face. It's kind of hard to show that on camera. But you can see the process I'm going through with basically the same I did with the dry fitting. And I'm going to try to make sure I got this centered before I actually set it down where it now becomes permanent and the adhesive is, you know, would no longer be removable. So I got this on. I didn't get it as perfectly centered as I want to, but it's one of those if I try to go for perfection and keep, you know, try to peel it off again. So I get a little more on the left side than the right, but I'll wrap that down when I when I'm done. Don't try to keep peeling it off and re-sticking it to get it absolutely perfect for, for two reasons. One, you'll just go back and forth. You'll be a millimeter or half millimeter in each direction. But number two, after so many peels, the adhesive will no longer work. It won't set down. But look how cool that is with that green insert. So you got the Hellcat logo on one side and you got the uh, Handle It logo, their logo on the other side. It's really cool looking. So last piece to do is put the back on. You'll notice I didn't fully stick down the sides just in case there's an interference at the back. Now the way this one goes, you want to have the 
concave part and then you've got another piece up up there but it's you want it to fit around the magazine grip so this is the same basic game peel a section off using your fingernails wherever you have to actually touch it because your fingernails are less likely to put grease or a fingerprint on it line it up best as you can I'm going to use the magazine well as my line up point I'm going to stick it down through the middle and then once I'm happy that I've got it centered I'll stick it down with my thumb and then I'm going to bring these down I'll bring the edges down and again I probably could have done a slightly better job of centering it but in trying to peel it and restick it and peel it and restick it I'm more likely to actually ruin it than if I were to just roll with what I've got Let it, it, when you do this you're going to have an easier time of it because you're going to be holding it for you to see it you're not going to be holding it for the camera to see it it's actually probably easier to get this perfect if you're not trying to show it on camera but it'll do for what I want to do and now I'm going to squeeze it down and anytime I rub I'm going to rub towards the edge push out any bubbles I've got set it in place this little piece on both sides it's a little bit high towards the slide, but I really didn't want it to get down into the magazine wall area because you're going to be messing around here and you're going to probably peel it up. The slide should sit higher up on top and not interfere with this, but if for any reason it did, I've just taken an exacto knife and very carefully trim that edge. And then make sure you don't peel it up while you're doing it, but I don't think I'm going to have a problem there at all. And I did clean the entire grip area with, with the uh, alcohol. So the last piece to do is to, now that you've got all the pieces in place, is to take either a heat gun on low or a hair dryer on high and you're going to heat the whole thing up. You want to get it to under 130 degrees. It's kind of like a hot cup of coffee. So if you can comfortably touch it but it feels hot, then it's hot enough. That's going to help set the adhesive and it'll also if you've got any bubbles in it, it'll give you the opportunity to rub the bubbles out, get everything to set down. So I'm going to do the whole grip, kind of go back and forth, keep moving it, heat the whole thing up and then I'm going to reseed it all, but there's probably not too many more things, maybe other than uh, nails on a chalkboard, that are no, more annoying than listening to a hairdryer. So I'm going to stop, I'm going to do that, but the process I'm going to follow is just to keep going in circles. I'm not going to stay in any one spot until I got the whole thing, you know, hot like a cup of coffee, set everything down, and then go from there. So I heated it all up, went through, I pushed anywhere I was pushing, I pushed out, take special care around here not to rub, so I pushed flat. Kind of the same thing with that, where it matches their logo. And uh, got it all debubbled, flattened down, all the corners down. Anytime you have a corner, you push away from the center towards the edge so that you're rolling the edge down instead of accidentally rolling the edge up. And make sure everything is well flat and seated. And again, if you get any edge like that kind of sticks up, you would just trim it. You shouldn't have to trim these. But you know, if you centered it a little bit off, you're better off having it not hang down here because you're going to be playing here all the time than areas where you're less likely to touch it. Well, let's see what we had for effect we had on us on the uh, thickness. So we'll do side to side thickness. 10.81. I'm sorry, 1.081 and 1.8375. So it did add some thickness to it. It also made it, it's quite comfortable to hold on to. It's, the rubber gives you grippiness, gives you a little bit more thickness, but it doesn't you know, abrade your hands. Go ahead and put the slide back on. And now I have a Hellcat with a slightly thicker grip and a little bit more grip texture to it, which should make it a little bit easier to keep this little guy in your hands. That's the thing with these little tiny guns. So we're going to take it to the range, see if it had a, any effect at all, positive, negative, or neutral.
We got the thing off to the range, got a chance to try it out. And what we found with this one is the grip on this is a little thicker than the P365. So it's right on the edge of the sweet spot for thickness for hammer. And it's right within range of what's really comfortable for me. The grips are comfortable. They did exactly what they claimed to do. They did actually feel like it was going to stay in your hand a little bit better and gave you a little bit of cushioning. So overall, they were comfortable to work with. They didn't change my ability to shoot this gun well. It didn't, it didn't improve it, it didn't degrade it, but it did feel a little more solid in the hand. It felt like it wanted to stay there. For Hammer, it did make it just a little bit thicker and it kind of brought it into that sweet spot that where the grip was big enough to be comfortable for him. And what he's found is guns in sync, kind of the same with me, guns like the 42 and the P380 by Carr that are really thin are easy to shoot well. Go to the next step up, get to the PM9 or the Glock 43, and the grip's just not right. It's just not right in that sweet spot. This one is almost at the edge of that. Now, one thing we did have to do is, and this could have been just how I centered it when I put it on, the grip originally came back to about here. And it didn't bother me at all, but Hammer's got larger hands, and the edge was just enough to kind of just irritate the web right here of his thumb. So we had to do a little bit of range surgery and get a knife and trim this back a little bit. And when I did, that solved that problem. So if you find that the edge is catching you just right, you know, don't abandon the grips. Just give it a little trim. And it's possible if I had put them in, on just a little further forward or if I didn't have, you know, like I didn't have the size hand, hands that Hammer does, so I didn't have a problem with it, you may or may not. But a little trim will fix it. If you do decide to trim, be very careful about lifting it up too much. You want to lift it as little as possible because you don't. once you break that adhesive, it won't stick. But I guess if you ask the question, are they good quality? Absolutely. They've hold, they held up well at the range. They were comfortable. They did what they claim. They didn't bite into your hands other than this one spot. It, for Hammer, it didn't bite into the hands or pick or pull at you or anything. If you're looking for th more thickness like you might get with Hogue Grip, they're not designed to do that, and they kind of don't. But that extra about two millimeters of overall diameter did help Hammer kind of bring it a little bit closer to the sweet spot. And of course you can't you can't pass up the fact that they just look cool with that green inset on both sides. So overall, it kind of makes the gun stand out a little bit. They're cool grips, they're comfortable grips, and they did work well for what they claim them to be. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, Instagram, all over the place. Have a great day. Thank you.